Could a universal translation device actually work? Well, that was supposed to be in Spanish, so I guess not. I mean, it's very easy to imagine, right? You just put on like a pair of glasses or something, y así como así puedes entender cualquier idioma que quieras, pero it's not that simple, or at least I don't think so. A lot of times when people think about translating something from one language to another, they think about it like a word-by-word -word process. For example, if we were to translate I speak English as yo hablo inglés, perfectly serviceable translation, but if you speak Spanish, you already know that's not the best translation. Because of how Spanish verbs work, you can drop pronouns much more easily than you can in English. So you could really just say hablo inglés, and in fact that sounds a lot more natural than yo hablo inglés. But you could add that pronoun if you really want to put some emphasis on it. Like, él habla español, pero yo hablo inglés. Just like how there's a difference between I speak English and I speak English. But hey, who am I kidding? Hey, I could probably figure that out, right? You know, check the volume of your stress pattern. Maybe there's a way. However, that little example actually illustrates what I think is a fundamental challenge for that kind of instant translation, which is that a lot of what we're communicating is what we're not communicating. In the 1970s, a linguist named Paul Grice introduced a theory of how people communicate meaning to one another. That theory is called the cooperative principle, but basically it centers around four rules of conversation that Grice argued we all have a sense of when we're communicating. The first one is the maxim of quantity. Say as much as you need to say, nothing more, nothing less. If you asked me where I lived, I would say Chicago. I wouldn't say Chicago in the state of Illinois in the Midwestern region of the, you know, who asked? The second maxim is the maxim of quality, which is basically just don't lie. If you asked me where I live and I said Los Angeles, gotcha. Yeah, it just sets us up for a weird conversation, doesn't it? The third maxim is the maxim of relation. In other words, be relevant. If you asked me where I was from and I said, oh, I had a great bagel for breakfast today, it'd be like, okay. Finally, the fourth one is the maxim of manner, which is essentially just be clear. If you asked me where I was from and I said, oh, the windy city, well, that doesn't really do you any good, does it? Now, how does that relate to translation? Well, the funny thing about rules is that they're meant to be broken. Paul Grice laid out those four maxims not to say, oh, this is how conversations should work. No, actually the exact opposite. He said that we communicate a lot of meaning by intentionally breaking those rules. I'll give you an example. Imagine you walk into the room and I'm watching TV and you ask me, hey, hey what's on TV? And I say, eh, nothing. In doing so, I implicated that there's nothing worth watching. Or what if you're like, oh, I'm really hungry. And I say, oh, there's actually a great Italian place just a few blocks from here. Technically, those statements have nothing to do with one another, so I broke the maxim of relation. But in doing so, I implicated that that Italian restaurant is open and you could go there to eat if you want. For the record, everything I just told you falls under a branch of linguistics called pragmatics. That's the study of how context contributes to meaning. And as you can see, context pulls a lot of weight. So what I think is really tricky for the idea of an instant translator is the fact that so much meaning is really closely tied to the context of what's around us and the context between us.